Okay, the Lewis structure for the nitrate iron, NO3 minus. Well, first of all, you want to know the total number of valence electrons we're playing with here. So nitrogen is in group 15, it has five valence electrons, and oxygen is in group 16, so it has six valence electrons. So five from that nitrogen, six from each of the oxygens, and there's a negative charge there that, single, uh, that indicates I have one more electron. Electrons are negative and there's an extra negative. Now I'm interested in the pairs of electrons, so divide by two, and that's going to give me uh, 12. So I have 12 pairs of electrons. Almost always the first atom is the one that goes in the middle of the molecule, and the others are split up evenly around it. And I've got to make this into one molecule initially. So let me just join it up like that. So these lines are pairs of electrons. I need to distribute 12 and I've distributed three. So nine more. Now you might be tempted to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, definitely there's now 12 pairs of electrons. But notice that nitrogen only has three lines, three electron pairs. It needs a stable octet, so it needs four lines. So you can fix it just simply there. By convention, we put square brackets around the ions and the charge, and that is the Lewis structure for the nitrate ion. So the central atom has three electron domains, Double bond is an electron domain, single and a single, and no lone pairs, so that means it's going to be trigonal planar. It's going to be trigonal planar. Now you might think, well, hold on, doesn't this, this bond here more repel than this single bond? No, 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 don't forget that it's resonating. It's going around like this. It's like this, spinning around uh, the bonds, essentially. So uh, it's 120 degrees and trigonal planar. 120 degrees, trigonal planar. Let's look at the bond polarities here. So in order to work out the bond polarities, you need to know the electronegativity values. So for nitrogen, the electronegativity is 3, and oxygen is 3.4. Notice as you go across the period, the electronegativities increase. And as you go up the group, the electronegativities increase, giving fluorine as the highest electronegativity. We can ignore the noble gases. Uh, they don't really do much chemistry. Okay, so 3 and 3.4. So 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, and nitrogen was 3. So looking at the bond dipoles, is there an asymmetry of electron distribution around the bonds? Uh, well, yes, there is. Uh, nitrogen and oxygen don't uh, attract the bonded electrons equally. Oxygen has a greater attraction. So there's a very uh, small dipole, bond dipole here. So the bonds are polar. What about the molecule? Well, if I was to draw out those bond dipoles, I've got uh, that one there, that one there, and that one there. Notice it's more positive in the center and more negative where the oxygens are. Maybe you're familiar with uh, using this uh, symbology. Uh, that and that, that's okay too, to show the different ends of these polar bonds. But if I was to add up those bond dipoles, they cancel out. So the molecule itself is nonpolar. So slightly polar bonds, nonpolar molecule. Now don't get that confused with the charge. The charge is negative. So the nitrate ion has three resonance structures. And notice that essentially the double bond just travels around the molecule. So which of these is the true nitrate ion? Uh, well, the truth is it's none of these. It's kind of an average of all of them. This double bond here is really a one and a third bond, as is that one and that one there. This second bond on the double bond is evenly distributed around. So why does a molecule have resonance structures? Oh, it lowers its uh, energy, it makes it more stable. So I can think of uh, three alternative Lewis structures for the nitrate ion. 
that follow the rules. Each one's got to have uh, stable octets and uh, it's got to have 12 electron pairs. All right, so look at the formal charge equation. If you're doing IB, you have to memorize this. So I'm just gonna put the numbers in. I'll do a couple of examples. So the formal charge of nitrogen is five valence electrons minus four bonds. So that's gonna be plus one. And here, oxygen, six valence electrons minus one is five. Five minus six, that's gonna be minus one. All right, so put the formal charges on. So the preferred Lewis structure is the one where all the formal charges uh, are zero. Now that's never gonna be the case uh, for here because the formal charges add up to the charge on the iron. Let's just make sure, yeah, that's what they do. So uh, the one that's gonna win here is the one that has the most zeros. Mm. Well, it comes down to this one and that one when we're looking at zeros. All right, so this one's out. The second rule for seeing which is the formal charge, uh, for seeing which Lewis structure is the preferred one, is the most electronegative atom has to have the negative numbers. So the most electronegative atom is the oxygen, and so the oxygen should be the negatives. Wow, so it's definitely this one. Yep. That's the one we've got here. Because here, the nitrogen is the most negative formal charge, and no, the most electronegative atom has to have the most negative formal charge. And we're done.